Hello and welcome to the big picture. The polling to the five state assemblies, last of which is being held in Delhi, is getting over today. The results of these elections seen at the semi finals before the final mega elections to the Lok Sabha in 2014 is being awaited anxiously across the country. Among the five states, Congress has been ruling in three states, Delhi, Rajasthan and Mizoram, while Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh has been with the BJP. While Delhi has been held by Congress for 15 years, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh has been with the BJP for the last 10 years. While the outcome of these elections are equally important for both the Congress and the BJP, for latter it is more so since it anointed Narendra Modi as a Prime Ministerial candidate for 2014. The results will obviously reflect on his abilities to lead the party to the 2014 elections. Meanwhile, the emergence of Aam Admi Party as a serious contender in Delhi seemed to have flummoxed everyone, thereby resulting in vary varying assessment of the final outcome. Today, we will look at how the elections have panned out in all the five states and what could be the outcome and how will it affect the political atmosphere in the country in the run-up to the Lok Sabha elections. To discuss this, I have with me Pankaj Vora, political editor, Hindustan Times, Smita Gupta, associate editor, The Hindu, Nilab Mishra, editor, Outlook Hindi, and Purnima Joshi, senior journalist. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Pankaj, I'd like to come to you first. Let's t let's take up Delhi first. You know, uh, from what we have uh, read just now, it, uh, the polling percentage is about 48 percent till four o'clock. So it, it is likely to go up to the, till about. For, I don't, we don't know what, what exactly. The election commission apparently is saying 70 percent. It may touch 70 percent. So you know, you think that this is a unique election. All of us uh, are aware of it. This is the first time we are having a triangular con contest in, this, uh, in Delhi. Do you think it's a serious triangular contest? There have been two triangular contests in Delhi in the past. In 1983, you know, when the Metropolitan Council used to be there. Not the after the Delhi government came. It after the, the Delhi government came, in 93 also there was a triangular contest when Janata Dal candidates were in the fray and four of them won. Okay. And, you know, it had become a fight between you know, BJP versus the rest, in which the anti-BJP vote had got divided. And uh, this time it seems that, you know, both the uh, national parties are in for a lot of surprises because the Aam Aadmi Party, it appears, as the indications are, is doing exceedingly well and uh, it is going to, you know, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, upset the calculations of both the major parties. So you, th you think that the Aam Aadmi Party has made a dent which no other pa no other third party has made a dent, had made so far in, in Delhi? Well, that the results will, you know, determine what kind of a dent it has made. But, you know, at the support level, it seems the kind of support which the Aam Aadmi Party was getting, if it gets translated into votes, then there is going to be serious trouble for the two parties, two major parties. Sumita, would you agree with Pankaj on that? Yeah, I do agree with uh, Pankaj that the uh, Aam Aadmi Party has made a surprisingly strong showing at the support level. Um, how that translates actually into votes, we'll have to wait and see. But I think for both the Congress and the BJP, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Because it, uh, earlier, uh, it was felt that, uh, it, uh, in, at least in the initial days, that Aam Aadmi would only cut into the BJP's, uh, you know, the anti-Congress vote. But I think it's cutting into both Congress and BJP because you have not just uh, slum dwellers and people like that, but you also have a lot of the urban middle class, uh, which is, uh, which had said that it would be voting for the Aam Aadmi. So it's, um, I think it makes the whole election rather uncertain, the results. Nilab, the middle class moving away. Middle class has been a very solid base of the Congress, in fact, in the last uh, two elections in Delhi. You think that they have moved away from uh, the Congress? And you think that Aam Aadmi Party has made as much dent as Pankaj and uh, Smita thinks? The Aam Aadmi Party has made some dent. I mean, it's quite visible especially among the poorer sections. Hmm. There it has cut Congress votes and also, which nobody is noticing, a fair amount of BSP votes. Then BSP had, had a very significant number yes, of percentage yes, of votes last but time. This time BSP votes are being divided. Then, as far as the middle class is concerned, you have two kinds of middle class voters in Delhi. One is which has been a committed BJP voters since right. 1950s, Jansang right. BJP. The other is the non-BJP voter, 
Now, Aam Aadmi Party, what it's doing is taking a chunk of that vote away to itself from the Congress, plus certain floating voters which would otherwise have gone to BJP. For instance, in opinion polls, though you can't trust them much, but still there is a section which says that it would prefer Narendra Modi for prime ministership. Right. But in the that assembly is, elections, it's voting. That, that, is, that, is, that is being said by the Aam Aadmi Party's own survey. Own survey. Not yes. the others. <laughs> yes. Also, also some of the others are saying that, but to a lesser extent. So are you trying to say that the, the committed voters of the BJP among the middle class has not moved away? Committed meaning the voters who have come from Punjab, undivided right. Punjab, you know, though there the BJP has a certain section of committed voters, people who have been going to shakhas, who have been uh, in which what traditional uh, uh, yeah, Jansang, influenced by Jansang the Jansang RSS days. and especially in West Delhi. West Delhi you see Patel Nagar onwards right up to Dwarka. If you Notice most of Narendra Modi's rallies have been held in that area because even probably Narendra Modi was not risking rallies in South Delhi or in uh, East Delhi. Purnima, two questions. One, the same thing about Aam Aadmi, what you feel and uh, this, the division of the middle class votes, is it going to hurt the Congress badly? Oh, you know, Aam Aadmi has made a dent in the sense that uh, even the Chief Minister's own constituency, uh, one is not too certain of the of the outcome. Uh, you know, there are three uh, good yes, contenders. Arvind, Kej Arvind Kejriwal himself is contesting from there. So that's also going to be a very interesting uh, candidate. But, you know, middle class is a fickle vote, you know, uh, Girish. They have been with the BJP. They have also been with the Congress uh, in the 2009 Lok Sabha uh, for the past two elections in, with, the, with, the, with the Congress. Uh, in the uh, Delhi elections. In, in the Delhi elections. And what we see in Ahmadmi Party is a lot of voter disenchantment with do both the parties. Uh, that is getting uh, sort of uh, consolidated with the Ahmadmi Party. We still have to see how much they secure. Uh, in Delhi, but you know more than more than that, uh, uh, you know if uh, if Delhi is again, uh, uh, you know what uh, the Congress was hoping for uh, in this election is that uh, they had held three of the five, uh, they would be able to at least retain Delhi, and uh, two of the five. Uh, and uh, two of the five. Uh, well, they had uh, Delhi, they had uh, Mizoram, and they had Rajasthan. Right, okay, so they three. had three of the five. Uh, so Congress was hoping to retain uh, Delhi. Uh, this was, uh, you know, this was a very strong feeling at least two months back. Uh, but now things uh, seem to be shifting. You know, so there there has been a momentum. So there's a lot of anxiety as well. There's, there's the a lot of anxiety. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, I would say that um, <clears throat> this election will be uh, will be Delhi is a very peculiar election. So uh, one wouldn't make a, a larger point uh, based on Delhi alone because it's a surprising uh, sort of third choice that has emerged. But if you're talking about the overall uh, sort of five state uh, scenario, then uh, the Congress's best hope would have been to retain at least Delhi. Delhi. And, uh, and there they seem to be. There they seem to be. be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, Pankaj, you know, one thing before we move to Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, it, it, it has been a very brave uh, uh, thing on part of Kejri, Arvind Kejriwal to have contested against the chief minister. Normally, we don't see this kind of direct contest against two chief ministerial candidates happening anywhere in anywhere in the country. Well, I think you know it was. It is a huge risk he seems to have taken. No, he didn't take any risk. I think it was a very well cal calculated risk. He, you know, took a very, uh, you know, it was a gamble. Uh, you know, there was this impression being created that Kejriwal because you know, of his old proximity with the Sandeep Dikshit was hand in glove with the Congress. So he had to dispel it some way, somehow or, the, or uh, uh, somehow. So he decided to contest against the Chief Minister. He also knew that Chief Minister's, you know, popularity was basically more in the media, less at the ground level. She had been, she had alienated herself from the grassroots workers. So he decided that New Delhi is a constituency where there are large number of government employees. So this is the place where, you know, he should make his thrust. And if he, you know, uh, takes the shield, uh, the chief minister on, you know, he will get a lot of publicity and, you know, the message will go throughout Delhi that Kejriwal is taking on the chief minister and uh, therefore he means serious business and, uh, you know, they, the party wants to come to power. So from his point of view, you know, he has taken all the right decisions and um, this, you know, might, I mean, uh, he uh, might gain, as Purima was saying, that it's a very uncertain election in New Delhi Nila, right now. you think it, it, was a, it was a gamble worth taking for Kejriwal? 
Yes, I think he wanted to give an electoral message, and he has succeeded in doing that. By very few, very few minister. people, politicians in this country, do do this such kinds of things. But the best chess players do that. They <laughs> battle with the queen in the forefront. Also, Kejriwal is not a traditional uh, politician. Traditional politician. I mean, it's, he's a newcomer, and it makes sense for him to pitch himself against a candidate like Sheila Dixit. Gives him a certain amount of uh, profile. Smita, what do you think of the Kejriwal gamble? See, Kejriwal has everything to gain and nothing to lose. You know, you have to realize that. And it's given him, as Purnima says, a, a profile, you know, that he's willing to take on somebody who's seen as a very powerful uh, political leader. So I think he's um, made the right choice and um, uh, I think he's gained from it. Pankaj, one more thing about Delhi before we, uh, you know. What are the issues which is which is which is uh, you know be, been been highlighted and what are the issues which are in the minds of the people which is going to decide these elections? Basically, you know, it was the price rise which was the major issue yes. because of which you know uh, Kejriwal was able to you know make corruption as an issue because you know everywhere prices are so he, he managed to link prices and corruption. Yeah, he managed to link that. And number two, he also saw that Congress may have been in power for 15 years. But in the process, the organization had been destroyed. So it had become, you know, very personality oriented governance in Delhi. It was all about Sheila Dixit and around her. So he knew that the party was not, you know, party leaders had been, some of them had been marginalized and no one had been, you know, groomed to take their place. So he knew that there was a complete vacuum whereas Congress organization was concerned. So he, you know, made the inroads so into that. Price rise is going to be the issue which is which is going to decide the elections. Price rise and corruption. And corruption. And, and not only of the central government, but also of the Delhi government. Okay. Uh, Purnima, you know, the BJP's uh, gambit, that, you know, first it projected Vijay Goel, and then suddenly midway, through, they realized that Actually, it is not working out, and then brings in Harshwardhan. You think no, you think they have been able to they've been able to capture the imagination of the people? No, actually, you know, Girish, BJP didn't project uh, Vijay Goel. He, he projected, projected himself. He projected himself, <laughs> and uh, you know, for for the, the 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 concern of a lot of party members, you know, he had put up hoardings all yeah. over the city before the. I mean, they had to actually tell him. Uh, you know, to step down the rhetoric a little bit, uh, and uh, I think Harshwar. You think you think that that has that that has affected to any to any extent the campaign, the the chances of the BJP. Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, because the, they should have Harshwardhan is a good candidate. He should have been projected earlier. Right you know, the BJP has had a problem of uh, of uh, of a worthy opponent to Sheila Dixit, a credible kind of uh, uh, yes, face. Yes, you know, Delhi has changed in the last last twenty years. Uh, you know, from from being a Punjabi dominated. Uh, uh, city right. to a city of a lot of migrants from from UP, and you know it's also a changing city with a lot of flyovers. Harshwardhan is from uh, you know, So uh, is not uh, Harshwardhan is not that, but Sheila Dixit has a certain kind of urban uh, middle class kind of image, uh, image, which yeah. which kind of gels with the city's changing profile. BJP didn't have anyone uh, to counter that, right. you know. I mean, after uh, Bandalal Khurana's kind of uh, uh, fading away, they haven't been able to, you know, whether, whether it was to be Vijay Goyal or Vijay Kumal Man of Malhotra who was not willing to let go, or it was to be Vijayendra Gupta, or it was to be Ashwadhan. I think Ashwadhan amongst all of them uh, was, a, uh, was a very good candidate. Uh, although, you know, I mean, so I would have thought... It, it took them quite some time to come to It took them quite some time. I mean, I would have thought that someone like, for instance, Arun Jaitley would have been a very, very good candidate for the BJP, but Arun Jaitley also has uh, other ambitions, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so for the BJP, it was a difficult choice, and I think they made the right choice a little late. A little late. A little you know, late. And, yeah. and if they are not able to come, get through the, in this election, they should be they should blame themselves for, being, for delaying. Yes, them. absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, let's go to Madhya Pradesh, uh, Nilab. Madhya Pradesh looks to be a very interesting, uh, what's happening there is, seems to be interesting. It started off with, with this impression that, you know, BJP is, is, a, is, in, a, is in a state where it will just run away with, uh, uh, you know, with the elections. This time also, but to, as uh, weeks passed, you know, the, 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 there was, the Congress seemed to have recovered. You think the Congress has recovered enough to be able to, uh, you know, take the, take the state away from BJP? I think if the Congress had got its act, together earlier, it could have been a more serious contender. It, it closed the gap to a big extent, but the gap was so huge there. And the Congress uh, got a bit late in uh, taking off. That is its biggest problem. Even the Congress leaders, I mean, even it's reported that even Sindhya has been saying 
that he wished he had a couple of more months to him. The, the fact that you know there were so many factions of the, of the party in Madhya Pradesh and those factions were always seen as fighting each other more than fighting as an opposition against the government. You, you think that those factions have they managed to get, come together? At the not everywhere, I think. Uh, but yes, to a great extent, but not everywhere. That factionalism remains in factionalism the Congress. Factionalism remains. Yeah. Uh, Smita, I think you travelled in Madhya Pradesh. Yeah. What is your opinion about it? You know, you think that the... Congress has, has recovered enough? Well, you know, I agree with Neelab that, you know, they should have projected Jyoti Raditya Sindhya much earlier. Uh, but if today uh, the Congress and the BJP, the gap has closed quite a bit, it is not so much to do with unity in the Congress ranks as the fact that there are many senior leaders within the BJP state unit who feel that if Shivraj Chavan um, comes to power again, he will get entrenched and their political careers will be in jeopardy. Uh, the other thing is that unlike, say, Delhi... So, are you, are, no, sorry, are you, are you trying to say that there is an... There could there can there could have been an element of sabotage from within as far as the BJP is concerned? Well, see, there are the... You have three former chief ministers, Babulal Gaur, Sundarlal Patwa, Kailash Joshi. They are not very happy. Neither is Uma Bharti or Kailash Vijayvargi, who are contemporaries of Shivraj. Uma Bharti, of course, was his mentor, was Shivraj's mentor. All these people are extremely unhappy. And secondly, a lot of the MLAs, sitting MLAs, are extremely unpopular. Shivraj Chavan was not able to change as many as he would have liked. But having said that, uh, I, you know, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, the gap therefore has closed quite a bit. And the other point that I wanted to make is that unlike, say, Delhi, where perhaps Narendra Modi, because this is the national capital, has made some impact, Modi has made absolutely no impact in Madhya Pradesh, whether it is in the cities or whether it's in the villages. Okay. Pankaj, Madhya Pradesh. You think it is Chawan's image, if, if they are able to get through it, it's only solely because of Chawan's image? No, it is not exactly uh, only because of Shivraj Singh Chauhan. BJP, you know, has been the dominant party there for the last 10 years. Then, you know, basically, as everyone is saying that the gap is closing, whether it closes or not will be seen once the elections are, results are out. But Jyotir Ditya Sindhya's, you know, uh, being made the chief of the campaign committee did galvanize the Congress work. Right because he was not involved with any factional fight till now. And it was for the first time that somebody from the Sindhya household was asked to lead the charge in Madhya Pradesh. And uh, he's young and he's, you know, energetic and, you know, he b brought a lot of freshness to the campaign. But BJP is very deeply entrenched and uh, it's not easy to dislodge it, I, I don't think. And uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan has both his plus and minus points. Many were trying to compare him with Narendra Modi, three-time chief minister, etc., etc. So, you know, and uh, he also has... That, uh, is, that, is that working in his favor or is it working against him? That, I don't, that comparison which is con con constantly being made? I don't think it uh, works either way because Narendra Modi has already been appointed as the prime ministerial candidate. So, you know, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, whether he wins his, uh, this election for the BJP or not, will remain where he is. So, he is not going to come to the central stage or to the national stage. But... He has a very strong base in Delhi, uh, you know, people who decide in Delhi, uh, in BJP's affairs, you know, or, or whether it is Sushma Swaraj, whether it's Elke Advani, they are very staunch supporters of Shivraj Singh Chauhan. So I don't think anything much is going to change in Madhya Pradesh and I don't think there's going to be change of too much of change in numbers also. You don't think it's going to be as close as, as some people expect? I, I don't think so. Okay. So that's the, that's the dimension <laughs> that I was trying to uh, yes. uh, focus on is uh, is that Shivraj being you know uh, he has been compared to Narendra Modi, and uh, uh, you know although Modi has been appointed prime ministerial candidate uh, in the deliberations that led to the, this decision by the, the RSS and the BJP, both Mr. Advani and uh, Mrs. Sushma Suraj uh, were of the opinion that uh, actually uh, his the announcement of his prime ministerial uh, Can candidacy should be, should be postponed till after the elections uh, uh, because it would affect uh, the, the the situation in places like Madhya Pradesh a little bit, you know, to the disadvantage of the BJP. That was the, that's what uh, we will we'll wait said. and watch whether uh, the, their you know, apprehensions were real. So or as Pankaj said that you know Shivraj has a has a certain kind of um, uh, uh, utility value 
in the power equations that prevail in in the Delhi central uh, uh, politics of the BJP. In the okay. sense that uh, Swaraj, uh, Sushma Swaraj and, uh, and Adwani, Adwani would like to play him against uh, uh, Narendra Modi. We will come to uh, Rajasthan, uh, Nila. What is the state of affairs in Rajasthan? Rajasthan, you know, again, if there has been a, a turnstile government there, one 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 party wins, next 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 time the other party wins. You think there is any possibility of that that trend changing this time? Look, Rajasthan is a unique case in North Indian states, I would say, in the sense that the organization at the grassroots level of both the parties is very strong. Yes. Rajasthan is one of the few states where the Congress organization is also strong Equally at the grassroots level. As that of BJP. Whatever happens at the leadership level. And the BJP also has a very strong presence. That is why I have been watching Rajasthan elections since 1995. And in all the <clears throat> these elections, the gap has been between 0.5% to 2%, right. not more than that, of votes. Now, this has resulted at various points of time in, it has translated into seats variously, differently, always. Because it depends where you gain votes, you know, and how the seats are and whether the uh, other players are in the field or not. So it depends on so many other factors. It's not that an incumbent government has not been returned. Bharo Singh Shekhawat was returned in 1993, though with a after, reduced gap. Yes. After that, it has not. Uh, after that, it has not happened. Yes. It has not happened. It's 20 but years then, now that you know. Every yes, year. yes, but you can't rule it out for all future references. You know. So, here what we see is now to win out of these 2% votes, the difference of 2% votes in the last elections, the BJP needs just 1.5%, 1.6% to win again. Yes. You know, so that is the position in Rajasthan. Now, if you so look at... So, it has always been a very close election close, in Rajasthan. Close election. And, now, and in the last 2-3 okay. elections, I think nobody got a full, full, full majority also. They were close to the majority. No, no. Vasundra had got Vasundra a had got into good majority, three. but then the percentage of votes was not very different from what it was the gap between the percentage of votes the two parties well, got uh, not Gallot very different. Back. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, Smita, Smita, Rajasthan. Rajasthan, you think that, you know, this everybody, the Congress at least, the, uh, the ra chief minister and also the party is com completely depending on the welfare schemes which have, which have been pretty successful as far as we have uh, seen in, in Rajasthan. You think that is going to carry uh, Gelot into in, you know to, to uh, for him to come back. Well, you know the pro uh, problem with with Ashok Gelot is not that he doesn't uh, he's not a good administrator that these schemes uh, have have not been good, but he has been a rather a poor communicator. So, uh, and on the other side, you have Vasundara Rajay who runs a very sort of energetic campaign. So. In Gaylord's case, it, 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 his dependence is on the organization. Yes. And in the last election, in which, which when Gaylord was chief minister and he lost, the reasons why he lost was not because of poor administration. He lost because the government servants were unhappy, because he didn't get the caste equations right. Right. So we have to see this time whether he's been able to, uh, you know, manage th these two sectors. Okay. Pankaj? Rajasthan. In Rajasthan. You, you think Vasundra, Vasundra has enough charisma which she displayed in 2003, the similar charisma this time also to carry her through? You know the reason why Vasundra won in 2003 was that BJP for the first time in, in its existence <laughs> contested 57 seats which it never used to contest. These seats were mostly in the Marwad region. Right. And you know these were Jat dominated seats and the Jats would, were always allergic to BJP and they would never vote for BJP you know, in uh, Rajasthan. In, in 2003, what had happened was that there was this gentleman, Chandra Raj Singhvi, who was political advisor at one time to Naturam Mirda, the greatest Jat leader of th that belt. You know, he was advising Vasundra and the Jats for the first time, you know, voted for the, co for the BJP and Congress was humbled throughout uh, 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 this Marwad region. Gehloth himself was the only person, you know, in Sardar Singh Pura who was able to, you know, salvage his seat. Number two, you know, the problem in Rajasthan is not as much uh, with the Congress as at, it is with uh, about Mr. Ashok Gehloth. You know, Ashok Gehloth is considered by party cadres to be totally inaccessible and he is considered to be, you know, uh, you know, not very friendly with a, a, a number of castes. 
So if if, if Congress loses in Rajasthan, it will be more it'll on be, account of Mr. Gehlot himself and not be a Gehlot's uh, loss. Yeah, that, that I think. Well, I would talk about the feeling in the BJP is that, uh, you know, although they are uh, sort of, uh, they are quite hopeful of, of a victory in Raj Rajasthan, they believe that the situation is not as, as cozy for as Vasundhara, cozy as, Vasundhara as, as everybody would like to believe. And they, they, they believe that uh, uh, Ashok Gehlot has done well with the welfare, <coughs> welfare schemes. And uh, let's not forget that there's a lot of uh, disenchantment and factionalism within the BJP also. Yes, uh, you absolutely. Know, there are lots of factions so against... The, you know, uh, is something um, which is uh, Rajasthan and uh, is something which is close and as Nila was pointing out the, the, the percentage of votes the difference is, has been always so close that we can't really say what's happening and uh, Chhattisgarh let's go we are uh, running out of time Chhattisgarh uh, uh, Nila Chhattisgarh is also again is a very no, Ram, Raman Singh 10 years you know seen yes, as, yes, all seen that, as all his Chawal Baba and things like that yes, but all you that, think all that, that he all is that, all that is there hmm. but we forget one point and this is with respect to all the three states, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, where the BJP has a very, BJP and the RSS have a very strong cadre presence, very right. strong organizational presence. So they decide quite early as whom to build as a leader. You remember Uma Bharti in Madhya right. Pradesh. So Vasundhara Raje was also built up as a leader. She wasn't natural to Rajasthan. Right. She was built up by Pramod Mahajan's PR machinery and the RSS worker on the ground. This time she has had to ally with uh, Narendra Modi uh, for that added yes. thing. Though she, yes. though, she, she, though she doesn't like yes. Narendra Modi from Chhattisgarh. Let's come yes. Chhattisgarh. Now come to Chhattisgarh. The RSS organizational presence there also is very strong. And but again Chhattisgarh also has been a region where the Congress presence among the tribals had been very strong earlier. Now that got eroded with the advent of Naxalism in certain areas. The Congress lost its uh, you know, organizational base in those areas. No, you, for instance, we are Buster. completely running out of time there. Yes, Nila, but then you think that two, two districts, two, yes. dist two not districts, regions, Bastar and Sarguja, they are decide. going to decide the fate in Chhattisgarh this time. Chhattisgarh, you know, the the, the accident, the, so many leader, Congress leaders being killed in, the, in in that region. You think that is going to be the uh, deciding factor? I don't think. I mean, there is definitely sympathy for the people who were killed during that Nexal attack. But the fact remains that, you know, Chhattisgarh is the only state where Congress is hopeful. Congress thinks that it can, you know, pull it off and can dislodge Raman Singh's okay. government. Okay. And, uh, Smita, very quickly on Chhattisgarh. Your take. Yeah, as far as the Congress is concerned, it's put Chhattisgarh at the top. It is one state that it seems fairly confident of winning, partly because of sympathy, for, uh, uh, because of all the leaders who were killed. And secondly, they are hoping that uh, there'll be a good, there was a good water turnout in Bastar. Okay. Uh, that area will help them. Okay, Purnima. Of the five states, I would say that both the Congress and the BJP, the feeling is that Chhattisgarh is where the Congress has an, has an edge. You okay. know? I think on that note, we need to end. We completely run out of time. Um, it will take another four days for us to know exactly what the results are. But it is going to be something which on, on, uh, on December 8th, I think it will be in... We will be sitting on the edges of the seat and watching what's going to happen. Let's see what, we, what is going to happen. Thanks to all my guests, uh, Pankaj Vora, Purnima Joshi, Nilab Mishra and Smita Gupta. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on Big Picture, same time tomorrow.